God desires that we would communicate His love toward others regardless of their religious or cultural backgrounds. What similar experiences have you had? In today's highlights, we'll discuss how Peter had the opportunity to do this. Today's Keep in Mind verse reads, For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us, who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I, that I could withstand God? Acts chapter 11, verse 17. Jesus gave the early church a commission to expand beyond Jerusalem and Judea in preaching the gospel. We don't know whether the disciples understood this as a commission to preach specifically to the Gentiles or only to the Jews of the diaspora. Up until the time of the first persecution, following the martyrdom of Stephen, the gospel was restricted to the Jewish people. The persecution scattered the believers and many of the Greek-speaking Jews began to preach the gospel everywhere they went. Philip began to preach in Samaria, and this was the first significant advance of the gospel into non-Jewish territory. After the conversion of Saul, the churches enjoyed a relative peace. It is in this environment that Peter receives a revelation from God concerning the Gentiles' inclusion into his people and the blessings of the gospel. This results in his preaching to Cornelius, the centurion, and all of his household turning to Christ. After this, Peter returns to Jerusalem to give an account of his entering a Gentile home and preaching the good news. As Peter tells this narrative, he highlights the theological and experiential evidence to convince the church leaders of the rightness of his actions. In Peter's trance, he hears the voice say, What God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. In other words, what was considered unclean, God has now cleansed. This was done three times. In scripture, when something happens three times, it is usually an indication of the thing being established by God, as in the case of Jonah being three days in the belly of the whale, or the angels crying out, Holy, 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 to God on the throne. This was significant as Peter was being asked to do something that was in violation of everything he knew as a Jew. Peter concludes his report in Jerusalem by reminding his hearers once again that God gave the gift of the Spirit to the Gentiles and added, What was I that I could withstand God? That is, who am I to think that I can oppose God? Peter uses the same verb that he previously used in chapter 10 verse 47 to express the same idea of opposing God, to question whether it was appropriate for anyone to forbid or oppose the baptism of the Gentiles. For anyone to do so would be tantamount to opposing God, for his leading of Peter and Cornelius was beyond doubt. God intended to include the Gentiles in his people. He was clearly behind it. Note that God's guidance factors heavily in Peter's retelling of the experience. His decision to travel to Caesarea wasn't based solely on his own desire. He was being obedient to God's direction. Peter gives God the credit for orchestrating all these events. As Peter retells it, Cornelius is promised that based on the message that Peter would share, he and his entire household would be saved. The Jerusalem leaders quietly listened as Peter told his story. There is no sign that they had interrupted him or distrusted his words. As they listened, they realized that they had been wrong. They seemed to be more eager to grasp truth than to defend their own positions. A timely lesson for any Christian, especially us today. Continuing that lesson, we see that Peter and the Jewish Christians had to overcome biases that developed out of their initial desire to do what was right. What were initially legitimate convictions about how to please God had turned into shows of favoritism and bigotry. This same dynamic plays itself out in today's Christian church. Often one group's differing religious views become a reason they are mistrusted or mistreated by other believers. Regardless of our differing views, we are all one body in Christ. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to iLights. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your minds and hearts through Christ Jesus.